Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker. Another day, another security breach, but this one is different. Let me tell you exactly why. Companies and organizations all over the planet often use third-party software and services as part of their own business. And when they do that, those services are considered to be part of the supply chain for that company. Now, SolarWinds is a, a very big vendor, and they provide many of these products and services to customers. One collection of their tools is under a big umbrella called Orion. <laughs> and it's a collection of tools to help companies manage their stuff. And you might ask, well, Keith, what stuff do they need to manage? Things like network performance, log files, storage, how things are configured. Think of the individual modules as part of this Orion framework as like hiring a team of people. They each do specialized things and you can just pick the ones that you want and put them to work. However, what if one of those people that we hired, or in the case of Orion, one of the tools that we're using has been injected with malware, which is a fancy way for saying malicious software. That is what happened to one of Orion's tools from SolarWinds. How did, you know, how did that software get tricked to bring in or install the malware? The culprit is software updates. Now, because those updates on the update servers appeared to be legitimate, this is an example of a Trojan horse of that type of malware. Also, because the malware allows the attackers to get remote access to the infected systems, it also can be called a remote access Trojan, or for short, a RAT, remote access Trojan. And the malware provides unauthorized and backdoor access to the infected system which could lead to stealing of files or modifying files, including user data, company secrets, applications, and more. And worst of all, this can go undetected for months. The update server where the files were coming from got compromised starting in March of 2020. Now, this could be considered a supply chain attack because the supply chain, which is the SolarWinds platform that they're providing the service on, is the carrier or the, or the method or the attack vector that was used to distribute the malware. And the victims were just the customers of SolarWinds who used that product who were compromised. So in summary, the, the update servers themselves included the malware in the updates and the hackers just sat back and waited for the systems to download those latest updates, which included the malware. So how exactly did the hackers, you know, get access to the update servers? How'd that work? It's likely that the hackers figured out the username and passwords or credentials, if you will, that were needed to modify the content on those backup servers. So one method for keeping track of updates and version control is to use a code repository. GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B, is a good example of this. So if somebody accidentally or based on a lack of knowledge, included in the source code, if they included stored usernames and passwords, then anyone who can access that code repository and download the code could also extract the username and password. And that's likely what happened as far as how they got the credentials to mess with the update server. Now, this is a major compromise. When something major like this is pulled off, where a nation state or some other organization who is very well funded and highly skilled and they get remote access and they go undetected for many months, as this was the case, that is referred to as an advanced persistent threat, or APT for short. So what can we do as average mortals? <laughs> well, as a user, I have some recommendations that you can do starting now that can help protect yourself. Number one, use a password manager. Number two, use two-factor, sometimes called multi-factor authentication. Number three, don't use the same password on multiple sites. If you do, you're just asking for your system to be compromised or your username to be compromised. If you're using the same password across 20 different sites and one of those sites isn't keeping it secure, the hacker now has your password and they can try it at other locations based on your username. Also, if you get an email, do not click on any links in emails. Don't do it. If you need to go to a bank or some other location, just go there the way you would normally go. Don't click on the links in the emails. If there's an attachment in an email, like an application or something that looks like an application or even something that is tricked to not look like an application, do not click on it in the email. That's an example of a phishing attack. Also, don't install apps from untrusted sources. So if you benefit from this video, please feel free to share it. My name is Keith Barker. I work for CBT Nuggets. You can check out our other blog articles, videos, and content in our CBT Nuggets library for more information. So thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.